few subjects are more extensive than the history of the Romans and their empire. For this reason, today we are going to talk about a subject unknown to most of you, the history of the Evocati, the elite of the Roman veterans. Before we talk about them, we need to understand what the life of a Roman army veteran was like. On average, a soldier's length of service until he was discharged depended on the military force he was part of, and changed slightly over the centuries. Generally, a legionary soldier served 20 years, a praetorian guard served 16, and an auxiliary soldier served about 25 years. Those service lengths may seem short today, especially when some people spend 35 years in a military career. But the average life expectancy in the ancient world was much shorter than today. 20 years spent in the legions represented a much larger portion of a man's life than we can imagine. If the serviceman served his full term and received an honorable discharge, his civilian life was usually pretty good. Veterans had a high status in ancient Rome and were protected by laws that gave them specific rights and immunities, and they could even become local decurions, a kind of councilman receiving land grants. If they received an honorable discharge, veterans would also earn money in addition to land. A legionary received 30,000 denarii, which could rise to 5,000. A praetorian could receive between 5,000 and 8,250 denarii. Now that we know more about veteran soldiers, Let's talk about the Evocati, who were also veterans, but with more status and some particularities. In short, an Evocatus was a soldier who, after having remarkably fulfilled his period in the Roman Imperial Army, was dismissed with honors and accolades, and later decided to return to active service. To give you an idea of how respected they were, these veterans were often leaders in colonies throughout the empire, and there was usually peace and security where they settled. In turn, this attracted other civilians, as veterans also represented a skilled labor force locally, as well as being very good for the local economy. One example of a thriving veteran colony on the outskirts of the empire was Thamugadi in Numidia, a short distance from the legionary fortress of Lambesis. Another factor that made the Evocati highly effective and that led to them being called back into service was that they formed a kind of ready and trained militia for emergencies they were much better options than conventional recruits. One example occurred during the Boudicca Uprising in 60 AD, when Governor Suetonius Paulinus summoned 2,500 Evocati. Tacitus wrote this about the event, The old soldiers experienced in battle yearned to throw the darts, and Suetonius confidently gave the signal to begin the battle. Additionally, the Evocati reported directly to the governor of a Roman province. In times of emergency, they could be used to reinforce the garrison. Another reason a man might join the Evocati was the need for money if he was going through hard times, or the urge to find a purpose for life after leaving the army. Just like today, it was not easy for a career soldier to rejoin civilian society. Many saw with delight the opportunity to return to the ranks of the Imperial Army and undergo new adventures in distant lands. Finally, Men who were called back into service by the consul or former commander also became evocati. The situation often occurred during the civil wars. For example, at the Battle of Pharsalus, Pompey used 2,000 evocati against Caesar, and later Octavian enlisted 3,000 evocati to face Mark Antony. In 67 AD, Gaius Licinius Mucianus, the governor of Syria, claimed to have recruited 13,000 evocati to fight the Emperor Vitellius. Another clear example of how the Evocati had a very lofty status in the Imperial Army was that they never performed tasks deemed low-level, or that were usually done by low-ranking military personnel. For example, fortifying the camp, digging roads, standing watch, and other less complex tasks. The Evocati were too precious for ordinary tasks and were allocated elsewhere. In addition to when needed, Evocati fulfilled other roles. They became instructors, standard bearers, and physical trainers for the regular troops. Many Evocati also returned to the military ranks to become qualified and skilled officers or administrators in the legions. Some joined Rome's police and fire departments. Others were army surveyors, architects, and quartermasters. The skilled and high-ranking Evocati often came from the Praetorian Guard although sometimes they were drawn from the regular legions. 
In some cases, they held very high positions in the army, even above ordinary legionary soldiers. Some Evocati were even equated with the renowned Centurions. These soldiers were also often promoted to the rank of Centurion, and were given permission to carry a vine staff, with which they punished soldiers who had committed acts of indiscipline, proving how respected and admired they were. There was always a substantial number of Evocati in each relevant Imperial Legion. When the commander of that legion was popular among the soldiers, the number of veterans joining the banner naturally increased. The name Evocati was also applied to a select group of young men of the Equestrian Order, appointed by the Emperor Domitian to guard his quarter. Some writers believe that this corpus existed under its successive emperors, composed of those renowned as Evocati Augusti, which might be translated to Imperial Evocati. These Evocati served 16 years as members of the Praetorian Guard, and were the only Evocati allowed to use the adjective Augusti, Imperial. Unlike the regular Evocati, the Evocati Augusti were apparently chosen judiciously by the Emperor. And that is the story of these amazing military men. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. I will be here and see you in the next video.